Hi dear woman and hi dear spiritual sister. This is a video from my heart to your heart because what I have been struggling with for many years and as an intuitive mentor I have noticed this pattern out there as well and with many of my spiritual sisters and clients clients throughout the years um, so many women is putting in the inner work we are doing the shadow work we are doing the inner child therapy we are cleansing ourselves renewing ourselves we are raising our standards and pulling out our inner darkness we're cleansing ourselves from our own bullshit we are doing what we can to become even more feminine less guarded less masculine we women are putting in so much strength and effort into becoming not only uh, a better person but also a person that we love and embrace and accept and like when we look into the mirror and what I see out there and I, as I also talk to my spiritual sisters about and my clients is that I don't know if you recognize it but men don't care they're not putting in the effort they are not doing what it takes to become a better human being, a better father, a better husband, a better boss. Men are in this state all the time like, I'm okay. This is okay. Our match is okay. Why are you complaining, woman? Because why change th something that isn't broken? That's the mentality that so many men have. Do you recognize it too? And so many men are struggling, they're not doing well or feeling well, and that's it. Look at my shoulders. They have chosen to be in this state without doing anything about it. Some men might be whiners that complains about it and even blames other people for how they're feeling, how they're doing and how their life is. So many men, point number six, so many men out there are in their imbalanced masculinity. They're guarded. They're in their mind making a lot of assumptions. Oh, you do this, you do that, and you this, and you are like that. So many men are not willing to put in the effort to take personal responsibility or to be open and curious. I've been on dates with so many men who make so many assumptions. Oh, you do this. Oh, you're like that. Ooh. And I'm like, please be open. Please be curious, please don't judge me and please do not interrogate me. I know that the masculine, you see, it's sunny in Denmark. So many women does the same and those are the masculine women. I used to be the most toxic masculine woman there was, especially when I was 10 years in the Danish army and I boxed with the national team. But you know what I'm sick of? I'm sick of being told by the love experts out there that we women need to do that. We need to be gentle around men's fragile egos. We need to put in the work. We need to do this to be more feminine. We need to stop being so guarded. We need to stop being so active and controlling and what the fuck, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm done. The amount of women who has done the inner work compared to the men. Let's take a circle. I'm looking at it intuitively. Such a big amount of women around the world are willing to put in the effort, do the inner work, work on themselves. So many women are working on becoming securely attached when it comes to love and only so little few men of that big circle is willing to do the work and is putting in the work and is working on themselves. If we take a circle of men, I'm going to do this intuitively, my mind is not into it. This is a circle of men. It's the, it's the uh, European um, healthy working, healthy work, okay, healthy working and, and healthy living men. We we'll take all this circle. Let's call it 5,000 of men. Only that amount of men are truly connected to their heart. Only this amount of men knows a lot about themselves 
and are men with good potential. But you know what? It's not me. I'm doing it intuitively. So many men, which means it's, it's at least 70 or 65% of out of this circle, 60 to even 75% of every man out there knows he's struggling. He knows he fights and struggles with his inadequacy. He knows he's jealous. He knows he has anger issues, trust issues. He knows that he's avoidant and he's shy and he doesn't like this and have all these aversions. And he knows he makes assumptions. Yet, yet up to 70% of all men are like, this is me. Take me or leave me. This is how it is. And don't you leave, dear woman, because I've got a test for you. No, I got a, I got a tool for you today, dear sister, on how to figure out if you are compatible with the partner that you're with. So what do we do about it? What do we do with the 70% of every man out there who won't put in the effort, who likes things the way they are, who blames everyone for everything and how their life is and how they're doing? What do we do with all the men who's, who is, how do you say that in English, who hasn't dealt with his mom and dad issues and subconsciously hate women aren't balanced within their masculinity. My concept is also called harmonious masculinity. Achieving more using less effort when you're connected to your inner harmonious masculinity. So who am I before I keep talking and babbling like I always do? I am Shirley Johansson, the, crea the creator of warriorsheart.dk. It's also called intuitive mentor because I've always been this psychic person. I'm a sensitivity handling expert, aggression therapy expert, trauma therapist. I developed my own school and techniques. I used to be 10 years in the Danish army with PTSD, boxing on the national team. Um, I used to be a real warrior and that's why my concept is called warriorsheart.dk. I fought with PTSD for many years, post-traumatic stress disorder. I had chronic pain. I was my own worst enemy. And I've put so much effort into becoming the person that I am proud of today and that I love. When I look in the mirror, not just what I see, but how I feel and am with myself. I'm proud of that. Yet every man out there, do you know what a man said to me the other day on Tinder? What is it with your pictures? It's like they're artificial. He said, they looked, how do you say that? He said, up still, they looked, um, well, he said something that wasn't very kind and he made an assumption instead of saying, oh, what's the, what's the, what's the purpose behind your pictures? And those pictures, they were me looking a little bit to the side and laughing and having my own inner energetic, inner, inner energy party, being an introvert enjoying my own beauty, enjoying being in beautiful surroundings. And this man comes and tries to put me down. And one day when I was with uh, another man on a date, when my body didn't want to go on that date because I knew it wasn't be a good, it wasn't going to be a good experience. And yet we do it. We women work and work and work on ourselves and we still put ourselves we still put ourselves out there. We make ourselves vulnerable. We're taking down our guards and puts ourselves out there, even though we might get our heart broken. In December or November 2020, I met a gorgeous man. But do you know what he loved? My love, my energy, all the affection that I gave him, all the confirmation and reassurance. He loved standing there eating up all the energy that I sent him. And he said, oh, I need you to work on myself. I need you to go on this path with, with you. And he truly uh, um, enjoyed what he got out of the connection. He even played with my heart saying, I want to have kids with you. How many do you want to have? And he did it just to make, just to boost his own ego, just to feel good about himself. And he never even once came back and said, oh, I'm so sorry that I led you on. 
So what is it with those men out there? Well, dear sister, we are in the feminine era and very few men will be able to catch up with us today. A, a, a friend of mine, a beloved female friend, she's a love coach just, just as myself, like she said today, we are so powerful as in our masculinity. And I said, no, we are so powerful in our femininity that it freaks the men out. Because men believe that being very masculine is being alpha, dominant, uh, arrogant. Um, it's about power and mind games and mind struggles, energy struggles. And that's the unhealthy way of being masculine. So dear women, dear women, woman, dear woman, dear sis, spiritual sisters, what do we do? I remember 15 years ago when I had barely opened my business and I saw this beautiful woman walking towards me. We were going to do business together and she, she, was, she had this big, beautiful pregnant belly. And I said, are you doing well? Are you okay? And she said, no. And I said, well, you're not safe about giving birth to this little girl. And she just burst into tears and she said, no. I don't know what to do in my relationship with a man who doesn't even want to get married to me. I don't know. How, don't I don't know how to feel safe in this relationship because he's all into his ego game with himself. He doesn't care about me. It's all about him. And I said, "Do you want to know how to figure out if he's the real man for you?" And she said, "Yeah." I said, "Say to him, fuck you." And she was just such an angelic person and she was like i can't say that to my man and i said you don't have to you just need to do it behaviorally from the inside and i said so you say fuck you to the man by engaging more within yourself than in him so she did and she went home and it started with her not making his lunch bag so one morning this guy stood up and he went where is my, my lunch bag that you make for me every morning? And she said, I don't know, I didn't make it. And he was like, but you always do that. And she said, always, it's not here anymore. So he learned how to make his own lunch bag and bring it to, to work every day. And she took that behavior and copied it to all the other areas of her life. She stopped self-sacrificing. She, she stopped pleasing her husband. A partner she, she stopped nurturing him and following him around like a little lamb she stood up for herself and treated herself with respect she didn't include him in in the um, decisions that she took and one day she called me up and she cried and she cried and she cried and she said he has not wanted to be married with me for seven years and today he asked me to marry him and he did that because he gained his respect for her as again. He saw her as an equal. So that's the same advice I have to you, my dear sister. To never go down to a man's level. The right man will level up to you. So many coaches out there, famous relationship experts, are living in, are living in relationships where it's about struggle. But do you know what? That's the old time relationships. If a relationship was, is and was about struggle, you were never meant to be. The right partner will level up and do what it takes to make the two of you work together. The, the right part, partner for you, it feels good. You're connected 90% of the time. You're connected, you're a team, you support one another. Oh, my legs. You support one another, you have each other's back, he's, he's in it for you and he's in it for the two of you and he's not just in it for his own big fat ego. So what I normally say is, you know you're with the right partner when you energetically turn, turn the back on him. Is that hard to say it? You turn away from him and you focus on yourself. You grow yourself, you evolve yourself. You give what you need. You become your own protector and provider and, and best friend. And you go on dates with yourself and you do not forget your friends and your own hobbies. So fill up your life plate with all that nurtures you and don't turn towards your partner. 
Your partner should only get what he deserves. Self-sacrificing as a woman, pleasing, nurturing him and being a mother, that's not very feminine, that's being a mother and a man will not have respect for it. So the test is, when you turn towards yourself and nurtures yourself, is good to yourself, you become your own mom and dad and coach and, and, and you go on dates with yourself, you, you take good care of yourself. And you, so you start up ending loving, you start, you start ending, you start loving yourself, I'm so sorry. When you're in that state, you become more attractive and, and sexy and, and you take all of your love and not send it towards your partner because he didn't earn it. And you send it towards yourself because you know you need it. If you are with the right man, he will level up. He will come and say, I want to be in. And you go, okay, I'll see if, he, he, if he's worthy of it. So please, dear sister, work on your worthiness. Work on giving to yourself. Let go of being masculine and running after your man or any man in general. And the second test is, so the first is, put in all of your energy and love and affection, etc. into yourself. In order to raise your inner um, value thermometer. Shit, a hard word. And the other part, and if, if, if he's the right man, he will catch up. The second way to test if you're the right partner is to do this. Play with the thought that you're no longer a couple. I told this to thousands of my female clients who then have chosen to become divorced. That was not the goal, but if they had to follow their heart. So what these women do is that they, they go into this state within themselves and says, okay, for now, I'm just playing with the thought and surrendering to the fact that I'm not with this man anymore. And then all the women go, but I can't leave my man and how it's going to happen. I have these two children and what about the home and it doesn't matter. If you have the courage to feel that you have already split up, you're already free, living your own life, yourself or with your children. And depending on how it feels, you got your answer right there. Do you dare? I dare you. <laughs> This is the two, two ways you can test if you're the right man. The right man will level up when you stop focusing on him and us, but focusing on you and the children. The second part is, like I sometimes do, let's say I want to meet up with Peter sometimes as a friend. Sometimes the energies within my body says, don't go there. So I do this testing like, okay, for now, I'm just going to play, but I'm not going to hang out with Peter. And depending on how I feel afterwards, if I get more energized, I feel more happy and free and lighthearted, there's my answer. I'm not gonna hang out tomorrow with Peter. And that's the same technique you're gonna use to figure out whether you're gonna leave this person or not. But please promise me one thing, this video, video has been divine uh, protected. So do not teach this exercise to anyone else. Get them to watch this video. Do not take responsibility or ownership for what I'm teaching you today. Be a good spiritual person with respect what I have been t uh, teaching you. Tell other people what I told you and say this is where it, come, where it comes from. I have learned something called noble healing from uh, Alison Armstrong and I'm always like this is the technique that I was taught by Alison Armstrong. She inspired me so remember to do that. Have enough respect and love for me to respect what I'm teaching you today. And I can't wait to hear what you think or feel. Not think, I don't care about how you think. Tell me how you feel about this video. Did you learn anything? And how did it go, did it go to uh, implement those two techniques? I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching me here today. And my life purpose is to help successfully um, coaches, female entrepreneurs, uh, therapists master the inner divine leadership so achieving more is possible using less effort thank you so much for watching today namaste there you are <laughs>